so this subject about self-love and why is it so important for women? Uh, hello, everyone who just turning the camera on. Um, why is it so important? Because as women, uh, we tend, our nature is to give, our nature is to love and nourish. And very often in our best intentions, we lose ourselves if we don't um, come back to our center, if we don't fill our cup full. And to have this balance of giving and receiving back, even if we receive from ourselves, and we'll speak why when we give back ourselves, we start giving unconditionally. So we don't expect this from others. This is why self-love is so important. So before we dive into the subject, um, just want to welcome everyone uh, else who is joining. Um, so most of us, I think, come from the traditions, culture, families where maybe it was not encouraged or even woke how important it is to love ourselves. Even in um, many religions, um, selflessness, self-giving is seen as a virtue, which it is true, but as long as it doesn't come from just like one way. Um, and uh, that's why uh, many of us were never taught that it's important to love ourselves. It's important to ca take care of our needs. And very often women end up uh, being um, frustrated, uh, feeling that it's one way relationships, that they're the only one who care. And uh, it creates lots of um, dissatisfaction and um, draining our energy. And as I said, if we don't uh, break this pattern and also turn the uh, focus inwards. But let's uh, also uh, speak about how self-love is different from narcissism or uh, self, what's the word? Selfishness. Um, I, I prepared some slides. Um, so self, selfish people are usually those who are interested only in themselves. And this applies both to men and women, but we will approach this subject from a feminine perspective. These people also want everything for themselves. They don't... Um, uh, enjoy giving others. They just don't only want to get, get and receive everything for them. Uh, they don't really care about others and their needs and they don't respect them much, their integrity and their uh, needs. Um, they see things, they judge them from the perspective of how useful it is for them. And usually, Ultimately, these people, they're unable to love. They're unable to love others and also themselves. So people who are very uh, selfish and they try to compensate by taking things, receiving things from others because there is emptiness inside. And they uh, usually even sometimes they hate themselves. And that's why they're so obsessed uh, uh, of getting things for themselves because they're empty inside. Uh, for those who know a little bit of, about polarity, yin yang, I would say this is the yang representation of uh, uh, lack of self love. Yeah, so it's very like, give me, give me uh, more. So they, they want more. Uh, the next slide is about uh, the 
another disbalance, another aspect of uh, disharmonious or lack of self-love, self-abandonment. Uh, so this is when usually a woman, <laughs> she feels that she's not important. Uh, she feels that her needs uh, like uh, is insignificant. And she takes uh, pride in serving other people in uh, because this gives her the feeling of being significant, needed, and also in control. Sometimes when women try to do everything for others, it's uh, like, a, so to say, a shadow of... Um, just something is happening with the slides. Uh, it's a shadow of uh, control issues. So when we want everything to be the way we want, and that's why we're trying to do everything ourselves. Um, also, so called good girls, you know, those who try to do things to please others, uh, to be loved or take care of our others. So like, to receive appreciation and uh, the feeling of importance. And very often when we're in such a position, the, our actions, the choices are made out of guilt. For example, in front of families, uh, parents, uh, society, also fears. If it can be a fear of rejection in the relationships and also obligation also often in families or also in workspace. Uh, and um, they often feel proud of not considering themselves important and they say they don't want anything for themselves, but actually from psychological perspective, it's a hidden um, self-centeredness. So because this uh, amplifies their pride, that is so selfless. Um, they also compensate the lack of self-love, but overgiving, but very often because they con continuously give and give, they often, even not like obviously, but deep in their heart, they expect others either to appreciate what they do or give back what they uh, received. Uh, but very often they don't receive it back or it creates expectations in the relationship. And then uh, women start feeling drained and empty, needy or frustrated or like they shut down emotionally or they become controlling and um, and um, complaining. Uh, so the next slide, please. So what is self-love? Self-love is a healthy balance. If we speak from perspective of polarity, yes, like yin yang, receiving and giving. Um, so this is a healthy balance. So when we give love, but we're also open to receive. If it comes, or we feel ourselves from within. And women who love themselves, they also respect themselves as much as they want to be loved and respected by others. And very often, um, uh, especially women, sometimes we're so happy with little things which we receive. So we don't really um, ask for more. We just settle with the like mediocre or like things which actually we worth much more. And when we increase uh, self-love and self-respect, then we will be increasing our standards, so to say, and automatically, and often it happens on uh, unconscious or subconscious level, the people around us, they reflect the level of love and respect which we give ourselves. And they start 
loving and respecting us more. So just like see how it implies in your life. So also a woman who takes, uh, who loves herself, she takes care of her needs and feelings. Uh, she's very lucid about her emotions. She's very lucid about her feelings. And she takes time to contemplate and process her emotions, to be with herself and also nurture and take care of her inner child. Maybe some of you heard from psychology about inner child and how we can see when something is triggered within us. We connect deeper with our inner child. Uh, and um, I'm just getting a message uh, um, uh, from my assistant. Uh, baby, it's okay. If you need to stop sharing the screen to meet others, that's fine. Oh, hello. Can you see me? <laughs> Apologies for this. So back to inner child. Yes, so she's very in tune with her inner feelings, uh, emotions, and she takes time to take care of them and herself. And also another way to uh, approach self-love is how we would love a little girl inside of us. If she's feeling abandoned, if she's feeling um, insecure, if she's feeling um, um, unsafe, then we take a moment to hold her in our heart. And it means to turn the attention inwards, to see what it is that we're missing. And very often, um, Maybe I will do the admitting. Oh, that's fine. Um, very often, um, if we don't do this inner work, we start expecting other people, often our romantic partners, to fulfill those needs, to give us sense of security, stability. But it, it really doesn't work like this because uh, we don't come to the relationship from the um, uh, being centered in ourselves, when we're ready to offer love, when we're ready to offer the best we have as women. And we have so much to share with, especially with men, because in Tantra women are seen as initiatresses. They help men also to reconnect with their heart, with their essence. So in order to stop this self-abandoning and self-rejection, uh, we need to look inside and see what it is that we're missing and start giving it to ourselves. And in this way, we will also start living an authentic and meaningful life, which reflects our deepest desires, values, and needs. So we raise our standards. We raise our... Um, uh, self-love and the world will reflect us and also uh, everything we do and the choices they uh, we make uh, opposite to when we self-abandon uh, in this case these choices are made out of love and compassion and even if there are any conflicts or tensions in relationship we don't lose ourselves. We don't overreact. We we will speak more about this when we just can be authentic, honest, and direct, and uh, communicate with grace and compassion and love. And usually, these people and women they're very loving. They're very ge generous and joyful because they cup is full and they're overflowing this uh, Shakti energy, what is called in Tantra, because she's fulfilled from within. Okay, so we move to the next slide. 
right, so now we do a little exercise. Uh, if you have a pen and paper, it would be wonderful. If not, that's also fine. Just try to uh, answer yourself what it is that you're missing in your life right now. What it is what you, what you would like to have more. And it can be anything. For me, for many, for a long period of time, I miss dancing. I missed having these moments of connecting with myself through dance. For you, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe time in nature, maybe self-expression through creativity, whatever, whatever it might be. Quiet time, relationship, love, just write it down, note it for yourself. What it is that you're missing in this moment or this period of life. And write it down. I hope it won't be a very long list. <laughs> I hope you have most of the things you want <laughs> and that you love. Um, if there are more things you want to write down, you can continue um, after this uh, webinar. And now, um, answer also another question for yourself what it is that you want less in your life for example stress rushing through things i don't know maybe it's even your work uh, whatever it might be Usually the first things that come to the mind, these are like the things <laughs> which, which are true. So when we don't think too much. So now let's look um, how we can start bringing these things which we miss and which we love into our life and shifting the uh, priorities. Uh, maybe if you could share the slides. Okay, uh, here I just want to uh, mention that the path of self-love and uh, self-care is actually uh, the, the life itself. There are no quick fixes and in order to live our authentic uh, life, we need to make sometimes subtle, sometimes drastic changes that will become our life. And uh, 
related to this, I want to mention that uh, self-love implies opening the heart uh, to ourselves and towards others. And also it implies that when our heart is open, we re release any tensions, any traumas, and it allows the free flow, uh, flow of erotic and our creative energy. So when we love ourselves, it automatically allows the energy in our Svadhisthana or second chakra, uh, which related to sensuality, creativity, eroticism, and also very much our femininity. Uh, this allows this part of our being blossom and then we can um, radiate and uh, become um, blossom blossoming women when we um, open or unblock these two levels, the heart and the erotic energy. So let's see how we practically can do this. The first step is the next slide. Yes, it is um, developing a deeper and loving relationships with ourselves. It means to bringing attention from outside, from our relationships, families, work, duties, to inside. It doesn't mean forever, but at least again to balance this outward focus when we sometimes even lose ourselves, uh, we bring attention back and center in our own being. So this is probably the most important relationship in our lives because if we're not in peace with ourselves, if we don't love ourselves, we can't really love others and we can't really be open to receive love. So this is uh, step number one. Uh, another way to amplify self-love is to accept ourselves as we are. It doesn't mean that we uh, just um, settle for what we are. Uh, it doesn't mean we want to uh, change something in ourselves to transform maybe some shadows or harmonize ourselves. But the first step is just to accept who we are right now, our body, our uh, behavior, our character, because we're all in this manifestation, we have our light and we have our shadows. And even if there is something that we would like to change, we embrace it as part of ourselves. There is reason for everything. And there is often our shadows so to say they are also our teachers we can if we uh, don't try to suppress them to push them down because then it just pushes things into our subconsciousness and we're not aware of them but when we look at those uh, parts of ourselves with love and acceptance we embrace them we integrate them and we become whole and this also gives us lots of peace and wholeness. Uh, uh, by the way, one of the pictures, the, the, screen, the top one, is a screenshot from a documentary. It's called What the Bleep Do We Know? Down the rabbit hole. It's a documentary about uh, quantum physics, how our thoughts and our beliefs shape our reality. And this particular character, this woman, she, she didn't love herself. She would say, I hate you in front of the mirror. And then her body would just, her nervous system, every cell of her being would receive this message. And then she would get fatter or uglier. And it was like, you know, vicious circle. And only when we start rewiring or 
changing our beliefs, changing our thoughts about ourselves, we can uh, create or like recreate our new selves. And this, uh, this is when it's very good to use positive affirmations, like I love myself, I accept myself, my body is unique, I'm grateful to my body, all kinds of things to uh, reaffirm our value and our self-love. Uh, and also in one of the books, I read that you can do the exercise of looking at the mirror at yourself but like deeply in your eyes and connect with the deeper essence of yourself when you can usually we do it with other people with our lovers gazing in the eyes but this exercise you can do with yourself and say i love you and like really mean it feel it and for some people it's difficult to do. It feels weird or awkward to say, I love you to yourself, but it's very transforming. It's very healing as well when we do this exercise. Uh, baby, we can stay on the slides because I will just um, uh, speak with on each of them. So the third step uh, for self-love is to see our body as a temple, to, ta to start taking care of it, because this is uh, a temple of our supreme self, of our true essence. It's our vehicle in this life. And when we take care of our body, uh, body will take care of ourselves. It gives us energy, it gives us life, so we can be um, full of life, radiant and joyful. Uh, it's also very important to have um, time for relaxation and rest. Uh, in some of our courses at Venus, we speak about the importance of vitality. So it's meaning that we have enough energy in our physical body, but also in our heart, so um, in our erotic level, because relaxation is when we can recharge our batteries. So it means to have a good sleep at the right hours as well. Um, of course, if we want to take care of our little girl, uh, imagine if we have a little girl inside of us, we would give her the best food, the most uh, natural, whole food, ideally organic. Uh, it's also we would uh, drink plenty of water because staying hydrated, it's very important for the function of all um, uh, body organs, including our sexual organs. Uh, when we love ourselves, we would buy the best natural vitamins and supplements and we wouldn't deprive ourselves of anything. And also to use natural cosmetics, something which would nurture your body instead of harming it or buying cheap things, which, yeah, which is not so good for the body. And uh, the last but not the least thing is to listen to our body because there is an intrinsic wisdom in our body. And when we connect with this inner wisdom, then we, uh, we are guided to our body. We receive the messages from her, <laughs> let's say. And also we take charge of our health rather than relying on medical system on all the I'm not going to say the words, but, you know, what is now promoted, like we strengthen our immune system and body will take care of our, of us, of itself and us. Um, okay, so the next uh, thing is to uh, take time to take care of our emotions and fundamental, fundamental needs. Um, so this can be done to start journaling, for example. If something is triggered uh, in us, 
we take a time to process the emotions and journaling helps very much to take the position of an observer to detach from those emotions and feelings. And very often when we start writing down those emotions, uh, we often like spontaneously alchemize them. Things are not as dramatic as when we are in them, when we identify with, with these emotions and uh, feelings. Uh, taking care of our needs also implies that we make sure that our needs met and uh, when we want them to be uh, met, we are direct and gra gracious uh, about what we want. So we speak, we speak up and we say what it is that we want from our lovers or parents or work and also uh, being direct and uh, being the voice of our heart, of our body, it, it's also very much related to our yoni, to our sexual organs. So when we uh, speak up in our relationships, this allows the free flow of energy also between our yoni and the throat. But we go deep into the subject in our Yoni Tantra Yoga course, but this I wanted to mention that it's very important to, uh, to be direct. And if something doesn't feel right, we don't uh, suppress it, we don't hold it inside of us, but we, we share it with others with grace. And also when we take care of ourselves, it means that we learn to say no if someone like a boss asking you to do more or like maybe a friend is asking to babysit when you feel already overwhelmed it's okay to say no it's okay to have like uh, barriers or like um what's the word um boundaries not to be crossed, yes? And also if someone is very invasive and trying to like, you know, put a pressure on you, we can also like be polite, but say like, hello, <laughs> I don't need this, yeah? So it's very, it's very good to, to learn to say this. And also another point on this slide is that we every day take a time for ourselves, whatever it, it, it can be. It can be do things which we love. And I said, for me, it is dancing. It's also time in nature. It, it is yoga. Maybe it is for some, something else for you. Reading a book, uh, self-development, art, Again, just you set a uh, uh, time aside for yourself and do what you love every day. Okay, now we move to the next um, way, which is very, very beautiful. And it is making pleasure a priority because pleasure equals relaxation and relaxation equals happiness. So when we enjoy things, when we enjoy what we're doing, it gives us lots of happiness. It can be creating a soul nourishing environment in home to have a beautiful home or like beautiful bathroom. And uh, this creates this resonance with beauty, with um, uh, um, feminine, sublime feminine ideals. Um, also, uh, making pleasure a priority it means that you can stop what you're doing, for example, working from home and get out in the middle of day into nature, even for a short walk. But again, to reconnect with this um, energy which will fe feed you and support you. Uh, it can be 
having a relaxing bath or massage or have daily habits that will make you happy and nurtured. And again, we make sure that we give ourselves priority and build our life so there is time for all healthy and beautiful habits. Um, it can be uh, doing things which we really love, listening to the favorite music or drinking our favorite tea. It's not depriving ourselves for the things that makes us happy, that makes us save uh, the delicious favorite fruit or raw chocolate. By the way, I want to mention, <laughs> so all these ideally favorite things, they need to be good for our body. So they shouldn't be, uh, I don't know, cheap chocolate full of sugar, which just creates a blood sugar spikes. And then we feel that we need another dose. It's something, or I don't know, crisp or something not very healthy habit, so to say, even though they can give us this sense of uh, instant pleasure, but in the long run, they are not good. So when, here, when we speak about pleasure, they should be uh, healthy pleasures and uh, without addictions. Uh, so we enjoy things consciously because when we do enjoy things unconsciously, they become addictions and um, we become slaves of those things. Uh, another important thing is finding creative out outlets to find a way we, we can manifest our feminine energy, our creativity, whether through art or it can be gardening, it can be dancing. There are like million, million ways of doing this. And um, also, you know, even uh, buying flowers, either buying or like I personally love wild flowers. I pick them up in the wood or in the, uh, in the meadow, uh, just to create this beautiful environment home and to uh, make sure that we enjoy the place and space where we are. Uh, okay, so now we move to the next one about uh, how routine and rhythm can help us um, with self-care. Because when we have a certain routine, it means we do the same things either on the same days of the week. For example, we meet our lover, <laughs> even though of course it can be spontaneous, but if we know, for example, every weekend or every, uh, I don't know, Friday we meet either lover or friends or we go on to yoga class or we have a dance class. So this creates some certain stability and security. And also it gives us order and peace. Uh, it can be also routine during the day. When we wake up, we spend, I don't know, again, half an hour for morning ritual, do something to connect with our femininity, touching ourselves, so doing short meditation. And after breakfast, we go to work or whatever we do. So this uh, schedule, so to say, creates order and peace. And if we have certain hours for work or for relaxation, then we do only the, those things. And this helps to reduce stress because we focus on one thing at a time and it doesn't create agitation. And um, also um, it helps to balance our hormones. When we eat, for example, at the usual times or when we do yoga practice, I keep saying yoga practice because that's what I do, but it can be something else for you. The uh, idea that uh, routine and rhythm and repetition helps to create um, this stability, security and peace and reduce stress. Um, 
yeah and the last point here even though this routine is good part of the, your routine can be uh, one day when you have absolutely no plans when you just go with the flow you don't have any appointments you don't check time what is next and this also helps you to relax deeply you just uh, stay tuned with your like every moment with your inner compass uh, but of course it's good uh, to balance it with um, certain discipline on other days yeah um, okay so the next um, slide very important for women is the ability to ask for help and receive it because very often uh, women uh, they tend to do everything by themselves because they think that they know better or they do better and that's why uh, we just take more and more things on ourselves and then we feel overwhelmed and even though it's very easy to fix it and to create some space to breathe in and relax when we delegate things to other people or we ask for help um, it can be um, asking your colleagues maybe to support with your project or whatever you need to do it can be asking your husband or lover to take care of some things which you would normally do i don't know plan a, a weekend together uh, also if you have children you can also involve them to do like little chores around home so like unload dishwasher so you don't need to do, do your, yourself everything um, and um, in this way we also need to learn to let go of total control to be on top of everything and it means that uh, we allow others to take the wheel and in this way, when we allow other people to be in charge of what we're doing, what they're doing, this also empowers them. And by the way, in couple relationship, it's very good to allow man to manifest his masculinity, to manifest his sense of direction and take charge of things without us controlling how he does this whether he does this the way we would like it or not and uh, uh, when we do this we really need to take a step back and relax and be ready to surrender to reality and it means that sometimes people would do things differently than we would do them normally and they can also do mistakes from <laughs> our point of view or they do things their way or sometimes it, it it's possible they won't do things at all but it's also fine so when we let go of the wheel or of total control we just allow things to manifest naturally while we're taking care of thing other things that we need to take care of okay um maybe a couple of more yeah uh, points. Um, another thing how we can create um, uh, this life which is full of self-love and self-care is to create a um, so-called no, but the absolute no list. These are the things which you uh, you wouldn't or like stop tolerating. You you no longer accept. And this can be that we stop rushing and we really take time to do things properly and uh, we try to, we try to stop multitasking. It also means that if we don't feel well or like we feel sick, we don't go to work and it's okay and the world won't stop if we take a day off. 
um, and take care of ourselves. It also means um, we stop checking the phone during meals. Uh, when this again creates lots of agitation and instead of enjoying savoring the food and feeling how it nurtures our body, uh, we lose this sense of being present in the moment and just get more agitated um, mentally. Um, we also don't uh, accept abuse in any way, either verbal or, I don't know, uh, physical, obviously. Uh, we also don't invest time in relationships. And here it's not only romantic relationships. It, it can be also friendships or like not really friendships, which are not aligned with who we are, with our values and who we aspire to be. So we stop this toxic relationship. We don't fulfill us. Um, we also stop feeling bad about saying no. Uh, we also try to switch off when we come home and not to think of work or other things and really to have quality time with ourselves. Um, we also spoke about, about um, speaking up so we don't stay quiet anymore when someone is out of line and we give a direct feedback. And also we don't hold on to or keep anything either in our home or life, which we don't love or need anymore. It also means um, decluttering our home. So we really allow energy to flow freely without any blockages also even in material world. And the last thing for today, it's not exhaustive list. There are more things how we can love ourselves and take care of ourselves. But this is what I came up for today. So the, the final one is to find our tribe, is to find our community or friends where we feel we belong with our soul, with our heart and where we can be through ourselves, where we can support each other in uh, mutual similar aspirations, when we can also share with our girlfriends uh, about any emotional states. It's very, for women, it's very important to connect with other women because this is how we feel fulfilled. It's also balance our hormones when we share, when we speak about our emotions. Um, we avoid any toxic people or toxic relationships. And also one of the ways is to be part of um, women's group or women's circles. And even though if they are not a formal women's circles, but if you f have a girlfriends with whom you can spend time together and share um, your like desires, aspirations and feel supported and accepted. It's very, very important. So you can be true to who you are and uh, blossom in this safe environment. And yeah, for those who are interested, we have uh, women's circles in uh, Venus. Uh, but as I said, it, it can be just <clears throat> a friend to or more with whom you feel connected and uh, who, who support you. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it. Um, now we have some time left for any questions. If you have, I don't know, maybe if you want to share anything from the list which you wrote. I have a question. Can yes. you hear me? <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, for a while now, I was kind of yeah, journaling, kind of like lovingness and trying to write down every day like a few things that I've done for lovingness, like for, for myself, to mm -hmm. get an idea. 
And I was noticing that, like, I'm doing things that I'm kind of like, no, okay, that are good for myself, and I would need them, or, but actually, when I am, I'm present in these moments, I feel like it's not that I feel love in that moment when I'm doing it. And all these things that you were writing, uh, also saying now, um, I was noticing, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but still it doesn't feel like self-love necessarily, just more like maybe self-care. So, yeah, can you say something about this feeling of love? Or maybe do I have a wrong idea about how love feels or something like that? Uh, thank you for your question. Um, what I understand, uh, you're asking how to really feel this self-love. Um, it's very really important to really feel it in your heart because sometimes we say things, oh, I love myself. But is it really? Do you really like, you can uh, even do it do it as an exercise for example for five ten minutes you have this affirmation or statement and you really try to go deeper and feel it with the whole body until you really you feel it you know it with every cell so it's not only intellectual but um, really feeling it with very deeply and sometimes if it's something which we are not yet uh, it might be difficult because our mind will be blocking these things because we already created established uh, patterns in our mind very deep-rooted beliefs which are very hard to break and that's why uh, daily positive affirmations and reminders are very good because they work over time sometimes long period of time until we rewire these beliefs and we replace negative thoughts or beliefs with positive what we aspire have i answered your question yes um yes i see some uh, questions in the chat would you like to unmute yourself and ask them. Okay, the question, why are women's circles so important? Can we have a mixed circle or just male friends instead to feel connected with? Um, this is something uh, which has been the case through centuries and traditions, uh, different cultures, because women, we feel the most understood and supported when we meet um, other women, because uh, female and masculine psychology or like mentality is very different. Men have different values. They have different love languages or different uh, ways in which they feel loved. And uh, that's why when we are with other women, we feel safe, we feel understood, we feel supported. And of course, if you have male friends, it's fine. It's also good if you have this trust and openness and acceptance. But I, I, what I meant that uh, generally, uh, women are the one uh, who, uh, uh, who are the best to support us. And they, I think in your own experience, I mean, uh, most of us, if we have any heartbreaks or um, strong emotions, we call our best girlfriend and share with her. And we also want to just to be heard and understood. And men, they, yeah, they not always um, can do this, can give us. If they can, that's wonderful. 
but also there are some things uh, from polarity point of view, there are some things which are good to share only with women. For example, if we have some things which like we're struggling with or some uh, very personally intimate things, um, if we share it with a girlfriend, we can process it, we can find the answers, we can find support. And if we leave it for ourselves and not necessarily share everything with our lover, then for him, there will be still a sense of mystery and attraction because he wouldn't know absolutely everything about you because you deal with your feminine uh, secrets by the way the series of free workshops they, they're called goddess secrets and they're supposed to be only for women because this is when we can exactly talk about things in a private circle which men don't even need to know and this uh, helps to uh, keep this attraction and polarity. I hope I have answered the questions. I just want to see other ones uh, and make sure. Also, I, and I, I just wanted to mention this with, with women and women's circles. Can you hear me? Um, I can hear, but I don't know who's talking. Ava. Oh. I, I, was, I, I was just wanting to, I was just wanting to say that uh, women are also assimilative in nature so whereas for men it's often important to fall and to find their own way like to 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 really struggle to get back on the path if they fall and so on but for women it's actually seeing that we're uh, very different in nature to men that we're assimilative uh, in nature so for example for us to be inspired by other women or to draw inspiration from uh, being creative or drawing impulses from other women, it's super important um, for us. So, so just to be with women actually enhances these processes within ourselves. Yeah, this is very beautiful love of what you said. And it's, it's so true. And we often see this in Venus, how we can support and inspire each other and assimilate each other's qualities. Thank you for this. I'm sorry if I'm jumping in in front of uh, the questions that you're reading. Um, can you hear me okay? It's uh, Christina speaking. I can hear, yes. Ah, oh, yeah. Perfect. I just okay. wanted to ask you if it would be possible for you to explain a little bit about what sort of courses and things are available in Venus because I've seen the, uh, the uh, yoni, yoga, there are some tantra courses. So just to understand a little bit more about kind of what sort of things can be explored, especially around the kind of topic of, of Tantra and then connecting with the uh, female sensuality, let's say. Um, yes, we have all the detailed information on our website and also Facebook. We also have Telegram channels where we regularly post about events. Our main, yeah, here is the link. <laughs> Our main focus is to help women through different um, events, different courses to connect or reconnect to our inborn sensuality and femininity. And this can be done through very practically through dance. We have courses of different kind of dance. Uh, and it's done not for the purpose to learn how to dance, but to connect to our essence. Um, we have a big focus on sensuality and eroticism. Yes, we have now Yoni Tantra Yoga. We have a Blossoming Breast course recently. And another one is coming, Secrets of Sensuality. And this is something which we don't learn in school. We often don't learn from other, our mothers and even our girlfriends because no one ta taught us to do this. And um, in these <clears throat> events, workshops, or courses, we dive, dive deeper to better learn who we are and what is already inside of us. So this is our main focus in Venus, to help women to, um, to find their 
full potential because there is so much more than we think and very often we just block ourselves because of society because of culture and maybe shame so this is very briefly to answer this question if it's still not enough i can speak more a bit later i just want because Thank our you. time up i want to make sure i answer other questions um so what is the another one what is the difference between self-love and self-care um there is not much difference because you know if we love ourselves we take care of ourselves uh, i think uh one comes from the other so they're very very connected uh, the question from Jacqueline, it's important to this love to be not about your personality, but towards your true higher self. Um, yes, it is true. Uh, many people, though, I think for them, if they're not into spirituality, the first step would be just to... Um, start taking care of us as women you know uh, very simple things to um, uh, as i said to take care of our emotions our body but essentially of course this first step will allow gradually to connect with deep and deeper dimensions of our being to connect with our heart with our essence because when we're full we start radiating this love radiating our best self outwards and then we can also see that we are much more than we thought there is an infinite well of this love and joy uh, though it is a gradual process um okay another one what is the shadow behind line pattern for women who act almost abusively controlling almost with hatred towards men <sighs> what is the shadow um you know there is a very beautiful documentary which has been uh, posted on the internet it's called the wisdom of trauma most of these shadows come from um, the fact that we were not taught how to love and to be loved most of the people both men and women who are either abusive or um, arrogant or um aggressive all kind of uh, disharmonious behavior comes from the fact that they were not loved as children they were not loved and taken care of by their mothers or parents probably they have some problems uh, in their families but also uh, sometimes it's also even if we come from a good healthy family but it's also how a child perceives love and care because yeah someone said they watched this documentary you um, so the short answer because these women and men they don't know how to love and how to be loved and that's why for them it's very difficult to love others because they never received the love they never felt how to be loved and they don't love themselves and we can break this pattern unfortunately as it said in this um, documentary and in all um, theories about traumas it passes from generation to generation and when we become more conscious when we can break this um, domino effect when we start uh, having acceptance have compassion towards ourselves no matter what happened in our life no matter how much we've been abused or not loved but we still come to the place where we 
try to yes have compassion and acceptance as we are and this will gradually heal ourselves in some cases if it's extreme special uh, therapies are needed uh, it's it's a matter of deep deep work it can be um, psychoanalytic but sometimes even being on a spiritual path and following a genuine spiritual um, uh, practice we gradually purify ourselves of those traumas we harmonize our uh, structure heal our heart and remove all the blockages so yeah there are there are ways to do it but the first step is to accept ourselves and to start loving ourselves and also if there are people in your life who are like this uh then uh, I, I highly like strongly recommend to watch this documentary it's called the wisdom of trauma it's available now for free online there is a dedicated website um and after i watched it uh it really open my heart and uh, I could start s connect to other people and see why they are like this, why they are abusive, why they are afraid of commitments, why they might be reject love, why uh, they are controlling. It's, it's their masks, it's their traumas that make them uh, try to protect themselves and when we have this uh, higher vision higher perspective understanding then we full compassion and also a lemma <laughs> it is called the wisdom of trauma um, documentary um, yes what is that I hope, uh, Ava, I hope I answered your uh, question. And, and specifically, you said about uh, controlling and hatred towards man. So probably they experienced it with um, either with their father or maybe school uh, mates. It just, uh, yeah, it is a trauma, obviously. It, it's not really their fault. <laughs> but it's it's possible to heal it okay uh, maybe the last question because we're running late would you mind if i answered the self love question sorry i give it him yes use uh, of course <laughs> Oh, thank you. I just um, I was thinking about this idea of um, self love um, because when you're giving yourself self care, it's maybe just you. The way you answered it might be like a language barrier thing. So that's why I, for me, okay. it's a bit different <laughs> because self care, you look after yourself. You can sometimes be habitual, like you know, you have to brush your teeth, so you do it anyway. So you take care of yourself. But when you give yourself self-love then you brush your teeth because you really appreciate how you're going to feel after you do it you really nurture the way that your teeth are going to look and how they're going to affect yourself and other people and the way that I like to think about it is befriending yourself so when you take care of somebody say for example you have friends staying in your house and there's somebody that you don't really care about that much like they're just there as a b and b guest then you'll take care of them you'll make sure that they do the they get the necessary things that they'll be taken care of but if they're your best friend you love them to pieces and you take extra care of them then you'll make sure that you lavish them with everything that you said like you know give them all the beautiful baths and nice food and so on and so forth that for me is the difference between self-love and self-care is really appreciating that inner child that really needs that nourishment and really treating yourself as if you're your own best friend so. yeah yeah thank you Susie it is important and I briefly mentioned this in uh, one of the slides about self-abandonment when we 
can do things, but out of obligation, you know, out of duty. We don't really put heart in it. And also, um, for example, with our families or like uh, our parents, maybe this is like, they want to spend time with them, but we like would prefer to do other things. But then you choose to spend time with them, but not out of obligation, you know, like, oh, okay, I'm going to waste my weekend and spend time with parents. But you do do this because it's important for them. You love them and you really put your heart in it. Yeah, this is analogy with a relationship with others. But the same as you said, when you brush teeth or take uh, vitamins, and I also recommend if you're not on our Facebook page yet, um, recently we shared the short extract from Anita Murjani talk. She She's the one who had near-death experience and she survived cancer and she healed herself. But she speaks that in the past, she would take lots of supplements of vitamins, but out of fear to get sick, out of fear to get cancer. And eventually she got it. She didn't really love herself. She didn't take those vitamins because she felt she will feel good. She will feel nurtured. It was done out of fear. And this is a big difference between uh, self-love and not self-love <laughs> yeah and I was just because I had done a lot of my score I just got a bit and I started taking it this week but I hadn't done it with that thought process so I'm going to start taking it with like giving myself love so thank you <laughs> yes yeah um, I was asking the question because of uh, exactly this my my intuition was thinking that um uh, of through my intuition, I was thinking there was a, a difference from one being from the outside. So caring is something you sort of would, would be encouraged to do from the outside or the motivation is sort of from the outside of yourself. Um, although it's from you, but it feels like as if it's from the outside, whereas self-love would be something that grows from the inside, that there's a difference there. And also maybe even... Um, through uh, a difference through allowing or controlling, like for example, this with the vitamins or something that uh, love is something you allow or, or nourish um, uh, or give time to or cater to, whereas caring could could uh, or self care um, could could be something that is is done in a controlling way. So it's it's not really done in a in a loving or or yeah honoring way necessarily. Um, uh, or, or with this nourishing uh, aspiration from the inside. Okay, beautiful ladies. Thank you so much for coming uh, tonight and um, finding time for yourself to maybe learn or get inspired how you can love yourself more uh, from within. <laughs> Um, I'm very happy to see you all and wishing you to have a um, very beautiful evening and summer weekend. Lots of love to you all. Thank you for your time. Have a great week.